your promises are yes and amen, yes. All your promises are yes and amen. Beautiful Savior, you have brought me near. You called me from the ashes. Welcome to church. The church has always been defined as the people who comprise it. And never just a building for gatherings. The church has never been confined to four walls because the heart of the church is to reach out to the community and serve. The church is people like you and me, connecting with each other through our faith and being there for each other when we need it most, like right now. In the first years of Christianity, nursing developed as an outreach of the church. This included risking their own health to care for the sick, feeding the hungry, caring for widows and orphans, and clothing the poor. In 369 AD, the church built the first hospital as a place to care for those who could not care for themselves. Fast forward to COVID-19. 
the virus hit us all hard. The isolation was a new and difficult reality for us. We missed spending time in person with our friends and family. We worried about the pandemic spreading. We were forced to deal with the financial effects of shutting down. In the midst of the hopelessness and fear, the church stepped up once again. We delivered millions of pounds of food to families in need. We reached out to people online to spread the gospel's steadfast message of hope. We stayed connected to each other and our neighbors through whatever means we had to. We realized we need each other more than ever before. And we realized we'll get through this together. We learned that we are stronger together. Now as things reopen and we can see each other in person, we have a renewed appreciation for moments spent with our loved ones and those in our community. And we, as the church, will continue to reach out to those in need. The world still faces as much trouble as ever, but no matter what happens, we're in this together and we are stronger together. If you're joining us this morning online, hi, we're so glad to see you guys. Um, we're, we're glad that you guys can see us, maybe. Um, thank you so much for tuning in right at 10 a.m. Uh, we are looking forward to a live stream coming soon because we think that being able to have a shared worship experience between those watching online and those in person is really valuable. So thank you. Um, today we are going to share in communion together, so if you are realizing that you forgot to grab your communion snack pack, now is a great time to go grab it. They can be found right outside the door. Our mission as a church is to grow followers of Jesus Christ through worship, community, and service. Um, one of the ways that I've seen our church grow followers um, is through gathering together around scripture. So we're excited to share some scripture with you this morning as well. If you're a guest with us today, thank you so much for joining us. We're so glad to see you. There are a couple ways that we would love to connect with you. Um, one way is through a Connect card. Um, those are located on top of our tithe and offering boxes, and you can fill those out and give them to Adam, give them to me, drop them in the box, um, or you can email prayer at aspengrovecc.com as well. You can also visit our website for all of our upcoming news and events. Um, so, for example, I talked about one of the ways that we can grow is through gathering together around scripture, and we have had two Discovery Bible study groups that have met this year. One just finished up last week, one is finishing up tomorrow. I think most people who have been a part of them would say that they have been really awesome. Um, we've seen a lot of growth and just really enjoyed spending time together around God's word, and so we're going to start another one. Um, it's going to start September 23rd. It's going to be nine weeks, so you guys have an easy in and easy out right before the holidays. And um, if you're interested, you can um, get more information and sign up online. You can also see what's going on with student and children ministry online. Um, for student ministry coming up, we have a we have youth group tonight at 6:30. Um, we are going to meet in the cafe because we have had the very wonderful problem of having too many students to really be able to distance very much in the youth room. So we're going to start meeting in the cafe. And you can also get some information about our service project coming up this month. We are going to go serve at Second Harvest Food Bank. You can also give online. Um, so you are more than welcome to um, give in the tithe and offering boxes, but you can also give online as well. Next Sunday, as we saw in that video, is National Back to Church Sunday. Um, we believe that the love of Christ is expressed through his body, our church, um, and that's us. And so that love is needed more now than ever. And so there are a couple ways that you can help us with this. If you are not comfortable coming in person to church yet, you can invite people over to your house to have a church house party um, and watch our service together. 
And if you are coming, we would love for you to invite someone to come sit next to you. Um, we ask all of our members to have someone sitting next to you twice a year. And so this is a great Sunday for that. And then please sign up online. That way we know how many people to expect and we can make sure that we keep everyone safe as well. This season has been, well, this whole year really has been um, one of a lot of change and that has caused a lot of worry and anxiety. And so I just want to remind all of us of the reason that we're here, which is that we believe Jesus is Lord and he is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Please join me in welcoming Adam as we continue our Hebrew series. Man, uh, we are so excited that you're here. Uh, I put a special song in the in the worship team's head this week. Do you guys, any of you know that that police song, Don't Stand So Close to Me? Like that's the new church anthem, I think, that's happening like around. Like I think they should learn that song. We'll start our service off with that each week. Uh, if you brought your Bibles, invite you to open them to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews 11 is this monster chapter in Hebrews. Uh, I Honestly, like, I don't know if it gets any bigger or better than Hebrews 11. If you were just going to pick one chapter out of Hebrews, I would tell you to choose chapter 11. Because in chapter 11, he uses two words more than a dozen times. And the words are, by faith. By faith. I won't read them all to you, but he says, by faith, Abraham laid his son, his only son, on the altar of sacrifice. By faith, Isaac. By faith, Jacob. By faith, Joseph. By faith, Moses' parents. Moses' parents are even included in this list. They hid their son, their beautiful son. By faith, Moses, the writer of Hebrews says, Moses gave up all of the treasures of Egypt because he considered what Christ had to offer as more valuable. It says a greater reward. By faith, Moses led the people of Israel through and challenged and encouraged the Passover. By faith, Moses. By faith, Israel crossed the Red Sea. By faith, Israel marched around the city of Jericho. They didn't have one shot in a million of conquering the citadel of Jericho. And by faith, if you look in verse 31 of chapter 11, there's this really unique entry. Like you see all these like amazing epic figures in faith. And then it says, by faith, Rahab, the prostitute. Like an awesome and unexpected mention. In verse 32, the author of Hebrews, like, he's so exuberant about this, this hall of faith. He says in verse 32, he says, how much more do I need to say? He said it would take too long to recount the stories of faith of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah and David and Samuel and all of the prophets. I saw this picture from a Christian school, or I took a picture of this from a Christian school, of the hall of faith. Uh, uh, clearly some Christian elementary school, they were going through Hebrews chapter 11, and, and all of the children picked a different, like, incredible character from this list of, this by faith list in Hebrews. And each, they drew a picture of maybe what that character looked like and wrote a story. And Hebrews 11 does this for us. It, it creates this incredible canvas of faith, like a, 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 a family album or family tree of faith. And what you want to see is, like the author of Hebrew wants you to see that, that faith is filled in, in, in every scenario, in every situation, in every gap, from every angle, everywhere you look, you see the faithfulness of God's men and women. In verse 39, he sums it all up, backing all the way up to, it's, this is a parallel verse to verse 2. He says, all these people, verse 2 says, from the days of old. He says, all these people earned a good reputation because of their, what's the word? Faith. Yet none of them received all that God had promised. And so, there's a couple things I want us to pick out from this, like, 
faith family tree. We need to eat some of the fruit from the faith family tree today. And the, the really the, the first lesson, the first thing I want you to take away is like in this awesome, epic picture canvas of faith, there is a there is a tinge of and it's in there. Remember, Hebrews gets kind of tough sometimes. There is a tinge of rebuke. Um, do any of you have that that uh, older person in your life that constantly reminds you how much harder it was for them when they were a kid than it is for you now? Do you have this person in your life? Some of you are looking at them right now, like. <laughs> Do any of you have that, that parent or grandparent that, that tell you the story? Well, when I was a kid, we walked to school every day, right? It was 15 miles one way in the snow, uphill both ways. You know, you know what I'm talking about, right? And what are they trying to say? Like, what's their assertion? The assertion is, you guys have it easy, Right? You don't know how hard it was. And this chapter in Hebrew makes that same assertion. It says, you guys don't know how hard it was. I love this quote from uh, N.T. Wright. I think I have it on the screen for you. I think everybody, there it is. He simply said, he said, as we look back at the great crowd who went through so much while looking forward to the reality which we now enjoy, he says, are we not rebuked for sitting so lightly on our privileges and doing so little to show that we are the community in whom what they were hoping for is finally coming true? Do you see that? Do you sense that? I was sent a story this week. I adopted my son from Ethiopia, so I I pay at least some attention to the news of Ethiopia. Uh, Fun fact, uh, Ethiopian New Year's is September 11th. I don't know why. Their calendar is totally weird. But I got this story. uh, Here's a a clip from it this week. 500 Ethiopian Christians slaughtered in door-to-door attacks since June. Over 13 Christian churches have been burned in Ethiopia in the same amount of time. In some cases, the perpetrators were going door to door with machetes and clubs and spears. This is a story from this year. I want you to just pause for a minute and just imagine like, like the Bible you hold, even the one on your phone, the church, the building that, that we meet in, for you get you got to come here and nobody persecuted you, right? You got to come here and nobody stopped you. Like it's do it, you get this sense that it's incredibly available to each and every one of us. And all of us, like, like it's been given to us as this incredible gift, and that gift has been given to us by the sacrifice of countless faithful men and women who have gone before us. Do you have that sense of the sacredness of of what we have right here now in this moment? On Sunday as we gather around the Lord's table and we'll, we'll share communion together, we gather around the Lord's table to remember the redeeming sacrifice of Jesus Christ And the question many churches in the U.S. are asking is, where are all the families with more freedom to worship than ever in the history of mankind? Where are the families? When I was a youth minister, I had an answer for this question. The, uh, the death knell for, for my kids in student ministry and youth ministry, when we asked the question, where are the families? I always knew the answer. Do you know what the answer was? Travel softball. 
or travel gymnastics or travel, right? You know what I'm talking about, right? Because when do they play? Like, and I want to praise some of our teens. Honestly, like, I think it was last week or the week before, one of our teens who's on a, a travel team played her game in the morning on Sunday and then came to church. Praise God for that. Right? I think Hebrews, like, in chapter 11, for sure, like, there's, a, I don't want you to miss, there's a tinge of this. The tinge of it is, don't take it for granted. Right? So I want it, I think there's a rebuke there, but I think there's also review. It, it reminds us to review our faith. And really, like, this is something we encourage, especially with our young people, but with everyone who's new to faith. I say, I want you to think it through. Like, I think Jesus really encouraged this idea. When it comes to faithfulness and giving your life, make sure you're thinking it through. Sometimes we use the language of count the cost. Because I think if you look at these characters from, from Hebrews 11, you recognize that they were out of touch, out of tune with the times in which they lived. They were outcast and outsiders. Hebrews 11 is going to say they wandered in the desert without a home. They chose the life of faithfulness, often at great personal cost. I want to just read just a section of this, verse 33 through 38. Like, I love that he puts this part in. He says, by faith, these people overthrew kingdoms. By faith, these people ruled with justice and received what God had promised them. They shut the mouths of lions. You know who that is? Remember a VBS song? They quenched the flames of fire and escaped death by the edge of the sword. Their weakness was turned to strength, and they became strong in battle and put whole armies to flight. Keep going. Women even received their loved ones back again from death. Right? Like, this is an epic. This is the faith we all want, right? This is the, this is the most exciting faith you can have, faith that turns weaknesses into strength, and your armies defeat everyone like you a faithfulness that defeats every single foe. But it's so important to see this next part that he puts in here. And man, don't miss this. Like highlight, circle these next two words. He says, but others. But others were tortured. But others, refusing to turn from God in order to be set free, they placed their hope in a better life after the resurrection. Some were jeered at some their backs were cut open with whips others were chained in prison some died by stoning some were sawed in half and others were killed with the sword some went about wearing the skins of sheep and goats destitute and oppressed and mistreated and i love this this next line man this is so powerful like, they were too good for this world. Wandering over deserts and mountains, hiding in caves and holes in the ground. Like, do you see this picture in Hebrews? Like, it, he, like, he's like, I want you to get this straight. Like, yes, some won victories. By faith, yes, some, some battles were, were, they won. Like, some, their weaknesses were turned to strength. Some, even the dead were returned to life. But in case, just I don't want you to, to get this wrong, in case you thought faith always ends in getting what you want, in case you had this idea that, that faith always equals somehow an easier life or an easier blessing-filled life, he includes that part, but others, as if there are multiple different outcomes for faithfulness. Are you with me? Like, he calls us to a really mature attitude about faith. He says, faith has many outcomes. Like, these men and women, like, they left the majority of the world and entered the minority of God. No wonder in the, in the previous section, no wonder it says that God is not ashamed to be called their God. Verse 35, in the second part of verse 35, he said, they placed their hope in a better life after the resurrection. Remember, better is one of Hebrew, the writer of Hebrews' favorite words. 
he comes back to it again and again and again. And this whole section, this theme, the purpose, even the purpose of the Old, T- Old Testament is pointing towards something in the future, something beyond this present life. And these men and women were content to stare difficulty and death in the face and continue to believe. And so the author of Hebrews in chapter 11, he says, have you really thought this through? Like, are you really grasping what this faith thing is all about? Have you thought through this thing we find ourselves in? N.T. Wright again, he says, they must think through the sort of faith their forebears had had and see how the long purposes of God cherished and believed in the face of impossibilities and dangers and even death itself are finally fulfilled in the events concerning Jesus and the new life they have as a result. And if they're to think through like, man, this sort of faith in How much more must we? Where have you placed your hope? Is your hope in the, like right now, today, is your hope in the better life that comes from Jesus Christ and his resurrection? So the author of Hebrews in chapter 11, he he tells us and he reminds us, like, don't take it for granted Think it through, but also in this chapter is this incredible call to renewal. Uh, many of us are, are saying that uh, they're, they're calling our world, the, the, the space that we live in and perceive as reality, they're calling it the post-Christian era. Have you heard this? Have you heard this language? The post-Christian era. It, it's just, it simply just me. it's a phrase that simply means that, that the Christian beliefs are no longer normative. Uh, let me ask, I'll, I'll put it to you in the, in the form of a question. Do you think that Christian ideas and values are increasing in our world and in our culture? Are they increasing in acceptance or decreasing in acceptance? What do you think? Say it out loud. Increasing or decreasing? Uh, I, I read this example, and, like, this was so shocking to me. I mean, I'm, I'm getting older. I can remember a time when on Sundays everything was closed, not just Chick-fil-A. Right? Do you remember this? Like, you couldn't go to the grocery store. It was all closed. I, I, I can't say that I remember this, but... But I've heard the stories of if you were somehow absent from church on Sunday, on Monday morning, your boss would ask where you were. Like that's, that's the idea that this Christian ethos was normative. Everything from prayer to schools and attitudes about the Ten Commandments. But we're moving away from that in our culture. I, think, I really think we are. It's no longer the norm in fact, more and more people, when they're surveyed, they, they either select about like a religious affiliation, they select, you know, none, or there's a new category box that's spiritual but none, and they, they check that one, right? They, they somehow believe in a spiritual kingdom, just not the king. Are you with me? They're, sit, they're predicting, and, and who knows, I read this article this week, I mean, everybody's great at predicting the future, obviously. But they're predicting that 30% of those who regularly attended church services prior to COVID-19 will never come back. And I think Hebrews 11 actually speaks to this really clearly. He reminds us that the men and women of old, they found a way to live by faith in their ever-changing and unique context. And so must we. So must we. I love, uh, I told you that I love that they included Rahab in this list. I think she may be the only woman in in this part of Hebrews 11. Uh, And and like, this is such an epic moment. Um, Because Moses and 
Abraham. I mean, you have these like incredible like heroes like Samson, right? You have these incredible heroes of faith, but he, they also included Rahab. And like when probably when they read this, they were like Abraham and Isaac and Rahab, <laughs> right? Like because Rahab was what she was part of the oldest profession. You know what I'm saying? Like she wasn't. Why is Rahab in the list with Abraham? And even like it's pretty awesome. It's Matthew includes Rahab in the genealogy of Jesus. She is an unexpected and unlikely mention. She would have been left out of like the more conservative orthodox list. But she's included. You're, I don't know if you remember the story of Rahab. She, she helps some spies that ultimately leads to the taking of Jericho. And really the reason Rahab is included is because uh, as Israel's getting ready to attack this incredible Fort Knox city of Jericho, like, it, let's just be honest, Israel did, had zero chance of taking Jericho. None. Like, and, and the fact that they were marching around only confused <laughs> the people within the city. But Rahab, as she's helping the, the spies, and the reason she's included in this chapter is Rahab's confession of faith. Rahab says, and you can, you can look it up for yourself. Rahab says, I know the Lord has given you this land. When everything about her context said the opposite, Rahab said, I know the Lord has given you this land. Somehow she knew without doubt, even against million to one odds, Rahab found her faith, and so must we. So let me ask you, are you, are you feeling discouraged? Are you feeling defeated? Feeling downtrodden? Hebrews 11 cries out and says, hey, if Rahab can find her faith in her context, then so can you. And so this chapter calls out to us in, in, in rebuke and renewal, but also like it's, it reminds us to renew your strength. Renew your courage by remembering our heritage. Renew your courage, your boldness, by remembering our family of faith. And there's this bold challenge to the life of faith. Remember in the, in the verses before, it says, really, that's the only way to please God. So we have some amazing elders at our church. Um, I, I love serving along, alongside these guys. Some of them are here this morning, Rob and, and Gary and uh, Paul and uh, Tim and, and Dave. Man, I hope I'm not missing. I think that's, I think that's all of them. Man, uh, I just want to tell you, I, I honestly, I just want to brag on, on the leadership of this church. Uh, we had a meeting about two weeks ago. And uh, I don't know what, like, you have in your mind when you think about, like, an elders meeting. You know, maybe it's not the most positive. I <laughs> you know, maybe you would, like, maybe you're thinking, like, HOA meeting or something like that. Like, maybe you're not thinking of it as the most positive experience ever. But I want to brag, like, the last meeting we had as a leadership, we, we actually even, we just sat around and we kind of even did a, just an alignment check, a faith check. We actually read this chapter together as, as a leadership. And we asked some simple questions of who are we and where are we and what do we want. And what I could tell you is, man, an amazing spirit just fell on that meeting. And there was so much goodness. There was so much alignment. There were so much, so many words of, of hope and encouragement were spoken. And it's like, we're down, but we're not out. And it was this incredible cry for faithfulness and an incredible belief that even in this season, God will see us through and his purposes will prevail. Show that picture again one more time. Man, I would have, in that moment after that meeting, I would, I would have added these guys' names right to this hall of faith. Drawn their pictures and told their story. 
Remember what it said that Hebrews says that through their faith, the people of old earned a good reputation. How about you? Will your painting be on the wall? Will someone say, by faith, Thaddeus? By faith, Rick. By faith, Rob. By faith, country. If you guys don't know country, he's here with us today. <laughs> like, by faith, Amy. By faith, Kim. By faith, Raji. Right? Do you see your name in this list? I don't think it stopped. I challenge you and remind you this morning to listen to the voices that have gone before you. Consider again their examples and don't take it for granted. Think it through. Place your hope and trust in the better life offered to us through Jesus Christ. And you can do that today. You can repent of your sins today and accept everything that Christ has to offer and and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Join the family. The world is changing. We can't stop it. The world is changed, right? People ask me all the time, like, how are we going to get through this? We're all changing, we're post-Christian. How, how are we going to, how are we going to do this? How will the people of God navigate the new normal? Two words. Give you an answer. By faith. Let's pray together. Father God, I thank you so much for your word and for its richness and goodness. Father God, where we need to, let us hear the rebuke that's here. If we've been taking the easy path, the smooth path, the, uh, then Father God, let it call us again to this place of faithfulness. Let us not take for granted those who have gone before us. And Father God, help us to think it through and challenge everyone to think it through, to count the cost, to consider what it means to pursue you, to pursue the better things that come through the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ. God, renew our hope. Renew our courage. Renew our strength and boldness. And Father God, renew our faith. God, we know, though, we are not out or down or defeated, but by faith, Father God, we believe that you will keep your promise. And the guarantee was the sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection. And it's in his name that everyone together says, amen. I'm going to lead you into a time of communion now, so I invite you to get your communion packets. We're just going to follow the prompts on the screen so that we can do this together. It's the tradition of Aspen Grove to share in the communion, the Lord's Supper, every Sunday as a part of our worship service. Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper as an important reminder of his death and burial and resurrection. The bread and the cup represent the body and blood of Jesus Christ poured out for each of us. And everyone is invited to share in the Lord's Supper. Before we begin, let's take a, just take a moment of silence together to just consider your heart and examine your life. Maybe there's a part of you that that feels called to respond to today's teaching and today's message. So let's just take a moment of silence together. Father God, we thank you so much for your son, Jesus Christ, for his death, for his sacrifice, for his burial, and mostly for his resurrection. Father God, help us to remember your son, Jesus, and this incredible movement on our behalf, not just in this moment, but in every moment throughout our lives. We love you, and in your son, Jesus' name, everyone together says, amen.
I invite you to take the bread together. If you're ready, I invite you to take the cup now. Just going to put some words on the screen and just invite you to say this last part with me together. Just think about it as we, this, this, this last prayer that we say together just talks about us being in a banquet together. I just want you to imagine that today, all around the world, we do this in remembrance of Jesus Christ. We do it with people from every country and tribe and nation. But think about those in Ethiopia today. They're taking these exact same elements. Will you read these words with me? Heavenly Father, thank you for inviting us to this banquet. Help us to remember the gift we have received and to live as brothers and sisters, members of one family. All praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Over the past few weeks, as we've been back together, we've wanted to to create just a, a really intentional moment of, of, of targeted, specific prayer. And over the weeks, we've prayed for parents and schools and healthcare workers and, and, and many other things. Um, and today, we just wanted to pray for those who are facing cancer or, or have struggled with cancer or have seen cancer show up in their head. Sometimes we call it the C word, like we, it, it holds that much dread. Just a show of hands, how many of you have had the effects of cancer touch your life in some way, shape, or form? Know somebody that struggled with it. Even in our prayer time this past week uh, uh, with staff, where there, was, there was a list of names of men and women we know who are struggled with cancer. Uh, we see it show up in our church so many times. And so for just a minute, I want to lead you in a prayer together. Will you just, uh, in your mind, picture those that you know who are struggling with this horrible, awful disease, and let's pray specifically for them. Can we do that? Father God, this morning we lift up to those to you who are struggling with cancer. God, I've been in the room when the doctors come in and said that horrible word. And sometimes, God, it's like Hebrews 11. We've seen men and women who have defeated it, and we have seen those who have been defeated by it. And so, Father God, we just we lift those up to you who are struggling with cancer, who have that diagnosis, who are struggling with the treatments that are often right now, they feel isolated from friends and people who can't come see them and, and feel supported. God, today, can you somehow help them feel an extra measure of support and love and encouragement from the body of Christ? God, let them know that they are not alone. And while, God, we don't have any power to control the outcome, we know that you, where it's, it's possible, where there is opportunity, we ask you to bring healing we thank you for the skilled and amazing healers that are working. Father God, we love you. We offer this prayer in faith, in hope, and trust in you. And in your son Jesus' name, everyone together says, amen. My name is Shia Vamas, and I want to get baptized because I want my sins to be forgiven and I want to be with, follow Christ every day, every day and be with Him forever. This is my favorite scripture, Colossians 3 verse 1. You have been raised up with Christ, so think about things that are in heaven, 
that is where Christ is. He is sitting at God's right hand. So I, th I thought it was awesome. Um, the scripture that I have written here that I wanted to share about Shia is Hebrews 12. It comes right after all of the awesome heroes that Adam was talking about. And it says, therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, all the amazing people he spoke about, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with endurance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of God. Because of, we endure such hostility from sinners, because he did, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. And I think of endurance um, when I think of Shia, which is why I, I wanted to read that scripture for her. Shia, you are just fun and funny and creative and passionate. And I love all of those things. But the thing I think most about Shia is that she is a fighter. Um, if you know her, you know that Shia is stubborn and determined and a little bit pushy. Um, and, and, and really is a force to be reckoned with. Um, and, and it's an amazing um, skill when you turn that into faithfulness for God. Um, and once you get baptized, your next job for the rest of your life as a Christian is to endure, is to persevere. Um, and because of how God made you and because of your faith, I know that you will be someone who perseveres all the way to heaven. And I'm just so proud of you. Thanks. Mom. And I love you. Yeah, uh, the thing I want to share about she is she loves the Bible uh, in an unbelievable way. She's been reading the Bible for years and years at night. Uh, she knows probably 90% of the characters in the Bible. Uh, she wants to talk to me about all, you know, scriptures. We talk often about the scriptures, and she has a lot of great questions. But I'm really just blown away by your love for God's Word and your, your love for what is right and just. Uh, and that's, that's just really impressive for a girl who's 15 years old to just... All, all you want to talk about is, is the Bible and the characters in the Bible and, and God's love and uh, justice. So, Shia, you, you are an amazing girl. Uh, you're creative and incredible and powerful uh, for <laughs> such a little girl. Uh, and and, and uh, I'm always impressed by your faith. She has been asking to get baptized for years now. Uh, and uh, she has really repented of the stuff she needed to work on. And she is uh, an incredible example in our family. So we love you, and today we're really proud of you. So Mom's going to ask you a couple questions. Okay. Shia, do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he came to earth, died, and rose again on the third day? Yes. And what is your confession? Jesus is Lord. Amen. Because of your good confession, I can now baptize you in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. For the forgiveness of the, your sins and the gift of God's Holy Spirit.